the second in our dramatizations of Rosamund Lehman's novels about Olivia Curtis. The Weather in the Streets. The first of two plays adapted by Elspeth Sands from the novel by Rosamund Lane with Angela Pleasance and Simon Cadell. just now. It was mother. Dad's ill. Pneumonia. Oh, darling. Oh, how awful. I'm so sorry. Oh, you poor darling. I, I'd better go and pack. Well, can I get you something? A cup of tea, at least. I don't think that's time. Don't worry. I'll have breakfast on the train. Come on, come on. Oh, thank God. Fog's lifting. To be fine in the country. Better do something about my face. Oh, dear. It is right. I do look ghastly. Mother will say I haven't been eating. Here we are, sir. It's usually room down this end. Thank you. Hey, go up to you, young lady. What did I tell you? Oh, see to yourself. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, you don't mind? The dog, I mean. No, not at all. I, I'm very fond of dogs. Revolting London, wasn't it? Relieved to get out. Will you be wanting breakfast, sir? Yes, thank you. Very well, sir. Rollo Spencer, of all people. Thank God he hasn't recognized me. Looking brighter, don't you think? Oh, much. It's going to be a lovely day. He doesn't remember me. Why should he? It was light years ago. Not that he's dead. He's still... That looks splendid. Please fit for a king. 
What do you say, Lucio? Girl, should we have the lot? Uh, an extra sausage for the doctor? Extra two if you can spare them. Sorry, sir. What a pronounced female. Who, oh, Lucy? Is she as possessive as she looks? I should say so. She goes into a sock if I so much as look at another woman. <laughs> uh, the rolls and marmalade are extra, sir. Good heavens, what is the world coming to? All right, extra it is, then. More coffee, madam? Uh, no, uh, thank you. Terrific breakfast railway companies do give one. I always overeat distressingly on train. You know, there's something about the words eggs, rolls, sausages. One look at the card and my self-control snaps. I must have everything. I know. Mm. I feel the same about ice cream list. Mm. Mixed fruit sundae, Cupid's kiss, <laughs> banana split. It's the banana split does for me. <laughs> well, I know what you mean. But you know, the sound of it doesn't absolutely fire me. Not like the word sausage. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm more earthy than you are. I hope all this isn't turning you up. Oh, not a bit. I'm just not a breakfaster. I have one and sixpence in my pocket. I can't afford to be. I, uh, y used to see you quite a long time ago, didn't I? At home or somewhere. Yes. Our family's the natives of the sort. I used to come to tea with your sister. It was ages ago. I didn't think you'd remember me. Well, I do. That is, I wasn't absolutely certain for the first moment. I've got a terrible memory for names, but um, you and Marigold were great buddies, as I remember. Are you on your way home now? Yes. Mm, me too. Going to murder a few pheasants. <laughs> I meant to go down last night, but the fog was too thick. Do you often come down? Not as often as I should. Mm. I seem to remember having a rather serious conversation with you once. At a dance, wasn't it? A marigold's coming out dance. We talked on the terrace. As I recall, you were, you were thought depressed. <laughs> yes. I, I didn't think you'd notice. Mm. We talked about life. Oh, dear. I always did in those days, given half a chance. You've changed. Have I? <laughs> Got thin. My mother would agree with you. She liked me best when I was a great big bouncing flapper. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not that now. Has Marigold changed? I haven't seen her since. <clears throat> not for ages. I suppose she must have done. I really couldn't tell you. The brothers are not the most reliable of judges, you know. You were at her wedding, weren't you? Yes, that must have been the last time we met. We didn't speak. Didn't we? I am sorry. Why should you be sorry? I wasn't an important. That's hardly the point, is it? Is she happy? Marigold? Well, oh, don't ask me. She enjoys life, I'll say that for her, but then she was always determined to do that. I follow her career in the tap. Hmm, yes. Yes, she does seem to be something of a public figure. Do you mind? <laughs> oh, good God, no. What Marigold does with her life is her own business. Do I really look such a purist? Oh, no. I, I didn't mean that. Of course you didn't. I was pulling your leg. Last time we met, you told me to read Tristram Sandal. And did you? <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> I started the very next day. What a good memory you've got. For the old times, yes. I seem to remember everything. I suppose when one's young, a little goes a very long way. It, it's like being on a rather empty road with a few signposts simply shouting at you and a few figures looming out of you larger than life. One has so little and one expects so much. I expect you're right. Though I don't know, I, I've always been an idle sort of bloke, uh, drifting along the stream, knock, knocking up against things. I, I don't actually remember my youth very clearly. One or two things stand out. It's the things that have happened more recently I can't hold on to. Houses I've lived in. People I've been with. It's all a blur. <laughs> it's age creeping on, that's what it is. <laughs> I suffer from the same thing myself. Though I shouldn't have expected you to yet a while. Perhaps that is it. Impressions pile up faster than you can sort them, so a kind of shutter comes down. The images grow dim. Not to speak of all the things one wants to forget. So one does. Do you mind the idea of growing old? Terribly. Do you? Oh. Mm. Teeth dropping out, wrinkles, fat, and slow and pompous. <laughs> no more feeling enthusiastic and expectant. 
but no more anything. I'm feeling you've missed something important when it's too late. Now, it's the principle of the thing that I object to. Being stalked down and counted out without a single word to say in the matter. I know. In a trap from the very start. Born to it, in yes, fact. Yes. I don't suppose we're quite the first to present it to you. No. And sometimes I think it may not be as bad as all that. But the worst is now, in the apprehension of it. And actually, we'll just slip into it without a struggle. Accept it quite peacefully. We shan't long for our time over it, then. Don't you think so? I think so. I don't feel it. But very occasionally, I get a hint that one day I might be going to feel it. I suddenly see the idea of it. Like getting a glimpse of a place a long, long way off. You only see it for a second now and then. In a particular weather. But you're walking towards it, and you know it's where you're going to in the end. I dare say you're right. At least it should be like that. Well, anyhow, if we've had a good run for our money, and that's up to us, isn't it? Yes. One's apt to put the blame on other people, circumstances, which is ridiculous. And unsatisfactory. you found that too, have you? I've noticed people with children don't generally mind so much. About age, I mean. Don't they? Oh, I expect you're right. You haven't got any? No. Have you? No. We must cultivate our intellect. You know what they say? The only lasting pleasures are intellectual ones. <laughs> I'm afraid I've left that a bit late. One ought at least to make a start in youth. So now that I've reached the ripe old age of 35, <laughs> that is, I don't care much about the intellect. Really? The scope of my pleasures is confined entirely to those of the senses. Oh, I see. That's the life I lead. Into the office, regular as clockwork. If I didn't have my distractions. I expect you lead a very exciting life, really. Far more exciting than the rest of us. Oh. Oh. I assure you my life's every bit as humdrum as the next man. I can't believe that. Oh, city man? Partner in an old established firm of stockbrokers. Now, what could possibly be more dull? A married city man into the bargain. What do you think of that? I read about it in the papers. Nicola Maud. How could I ever forget? I've seen you dancing with someone very beautiful. I can hear myself now. And his reply. I dare say she's as stupid as an owl. I knew then that he'd marry her. Oh, no. Not that I'm complaining, mind you. I know how lucky I am. You all seem that. What? Lucky. Really? What an odd thing to say. But I'd never have thought that... Lucky. Glamorous. Romantic. <laughs> you and your family had everything. Oh. Still have, I dare say. Oh, come now. You're making me feel positively guilt-stricken. <laughs> I didn't mean to. And all the time... All the time what? I'm sure you lead a much more interesting life than I do. <laughs> you wouldn't say that if you really knew me. I don't know many intellectuals. Is that what you think I am? Well, well, you're certainly not. What, what was it your mother called you? A bouncing flapper. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, the gas works. I've never known this journey go so quickly. Your bill, sir. Shall I make it up to you? Uh, yes, yes, thank uh, you. Oh, no, please. I'll deal with this, please. Uh, oh, thank you, sir. And I'd like to stand you one cup of coffee. Yes, certainly. Any time you invite me. But please take this now. Hello. I dislike feminist demonstrations. So do I. All right. But I'll hold you to that. What? A cup of coffee. <laughs> uh, perhaps I can give you a lift. You're at Little Compton, aren't you? Well, that would be on my way. There's no need, really. I can easily take a bus. Good heavens, I wouldn't dream of it. Benson will be waiting with the car. Well, if you're sure it's no trouble. I absolutely insist. This is a turn-up. Meeting you again, I guess. You live in London. Yes. You know, you ought to look up Marigold sometime. I'm sure she'd love to see you. I'd like to very much. She's supposed to be going down this weekend. Why don't you come over to Melbourne and say hello? Oh, no. I couldn't really. Mummy would love to see you. You were always something of a favourite. Was I? Was I really? It surprises you. Yes. You see, your mother has always been something of a symbol to me. A sort of ultimate standard. I don't expect you to prove of me at all now. 
I have an art. I, I can't explain. You are being mysterious. Is your wife coming down? Nicola? Yes. No, no, she's not. She, she's staying with, with her mother. Oh. <laughs> she doesn't care too much in the country. I see. All looks solid enough, wouldn't you say? What does? Houses, villages, backbone of England, yeah. Every time I come along this road, there's a fresh outbreak of bungalows. Look at that one. I don't know. If only I had the energy to set fire to them. Except they don't put up something worse. Look! There's one called Who'd Have Thought It? Nasty little brutes, I agree. England gets squalider and squalider, and nobody minds enough to stop it. Well, nobody can if it wants to. Can't people be educated? Ah, but they have been. That's just it. You're looking at the glorious result. I'd just like to blow the whole thing up. Start again. Dear me, an anarchist. You ought to mind about it. Ah, but I never do anything I ought. God, I'm going to cry. What's happening to me? He doesn't care about other people, real people, so long as his life is safe, privileged. May I have a cigarette? Oh, rather. So sorry, doesn't. You're right. The, the, th the thing is, hmm? the reason I'm coming home, it's because of my father. He, he's very ill. Pneumonia. I'm most terribly sorry. Why didn't you tell? How awful for you. I'm afraid I've been most frightfully upset. No, I mean, how could you possibly have known? Oh, God. Why did I have to tell him? Now I've made him feel sorry for me. I do hope you'll find it isn't too bad. I expect I will. I betrayed him, haven't I? My own father. Just to get Rollo's sympathy. Uh, Daddy was most frightfully ill last winter. Heart, kidneys, everything just seemed to pack up. We all thought, well, you know, you know what it is. One does tend to panic, rather, but he's right as rain now, practically. I'm so glad. Doctor said he'd never leave his bed, but he very soon proved them wrong. You must have been terribly relieved. Well, you know what Daddy's like. Hates to be inactive. But I, I say, you will let me know, won't you? About your father. I do feel awfully concerned for him. It is kind of you. Thank you. So perhaps I might ring up, if that wouldn't be an awful one. Oh, yes. Do. I, I mean, if you think... Uh, that, that's your place ahead, isn't it? Yes. I'll tell Benson to drive up to the door. Oh, no, please. There's no need. It, it might disturb. I, I'd rather he stops at the gate. You're sure? You've been most kind. Uh, stop here, Benson, please. Well, goodbye, then. Goodbye, Rollo. And thank you. Uh, who would I ask for? I mean, if I wanted to get hold of you. I'm terribly bad at names. I never remember. Uh, Olivia Curtis. I'm still called that. I, I mean, I, I was something else, but I, I've gone back to that. <coughs> Goodbye. Hi, Olivia. Hi, Mother. Now he knows all about me. That I've been married. But it didn't work. Dad. Why is everything so awful? Mother. Mother, how is he? Oh, much the same. Holding his own. Is that Olivia? I'm here, Mother. So early. I didn't expect you for another half hour, please. I got a lift from the station. I thought I had a car. I ran into Rollo Spencer on the platform. Oh? How very kind of Mr. Spencer. Quite out of his way, too. I suppose he's down for the shoot. I expect so. Have you had breakfast? I had coffee on the train. Is that all? No wonder you're so scraggy. I wasn't hungry. Well, how can you expect to do a proper morning's work on an empty stomach? I don't do a proper morning's work, Mother. Oh, you and Etty are as bad as each other. How is Dad? Can I see him? Not just now, dear. Oh, uh, he's well, having a little sleep. Later, perhaps. Why don't you ask Violet to make you some hot bovril? And when you're feeling refreshed, we'll have a proper talk. Ed has made a lovely fire in the school. You could make your bovril there. Come on, Miss. Thank you, Ada. Tell Violet it's just what I wanted. I hate bovril. That's not the point. Mother wants you to drink it, so drink it you must. 
It's what's known as doing your bit. <laughs> God, hasn't changed a bit, has it? Look, my initials carved in the desk. A lifetime of good housekeeping couldn't erase that. Makes me feel ten years old again. What are you making? It's a smoke for Polly. I'm still smoking, I think. Yes, we sex-starved women have cravings you comfortable wives and mothers wouldn't dream of. I have tried to give it up. It just seems... Mother thinks it's the life you lead. Working for Alan, that studio. Living dirty. What else would she have me do? Well, I think she hoped that I'd marry again. I'll go back to Ira. Is that it? God forbid. <laughs> Dr. Martin. Does that mean that he always comes about this time? Why won't she let me see him? She will. After the doctor's been. Does he usually take so long? He's probably talking to Mother. There's not a lot a doctor can do. It's good nursing at times. What do you like? This nurse? Is she a peach? No. More of a jolly fine girl. <laughs> Rob had pneumonia, didn't he? Yes, the year after we were married. Priscilla was only six weeks old. How does that seem to you? I mean, is he dreadfully uncomfortable? Well, he's restless and his cough hurts. But not too bad. Does he... Does he talk to you? Not much, just occasionally. He wanders a bit. Oh, I'll go. Somebody inquiring for Dad. The last few days haven't stopped. It won't be Rollo. Not yet. Not ever. Nice men like Rollo don't want to get mixed up. God, this day. Will it never end? Tell me. I've been meaning to ask. Do you ever see either? I bumped into him the other day. At Julia's. It was quite a shock. Was he embarrassed? No, I don't think so. I don't think either of us felt anything very much. Why did you divorce him? Oh, dear. I don't know. Too much trouble, I suppose. But couldn't he make things difficult for you? I mean, if you wanted to marry again, say? I don't think I'll ever want to marry again. Don't know any marrying men. Well, what about him, then? Rob says, well, that he might try and divorce you. He could do that, couldn't you? <laughs> so that's what's on your mind. You and Rob are afraid I might become the guilty party. Well, you needn't worry. Really? My life is entirely chaste and blameless. Worse luck. Beats me why you ever married him in the first place. He was desperately unsuitable. Mm. I just don't understand why you won't let me see him. You heard what the doctor said. He's at a critical stage. He must have absolute quiet. I suppose he's still asleep. Mother seems to be bearing up, all right. She's been marvellous. I came as soon as I could get things organised at home. Even so, I don't think she's slept more than an hour or two all the week. I suppose neither of you thought it worth informing me before now. Or James. The two black sheep of the family. It didn't seem necessary. Ah, oh, here you are. Can I see him now? His temperature's down at last. He's breathing normally. Does that mean it's too early to say for certain, but it does seem that... Oh, oh God. Oh, oh, my God. God. Oh, goodness me, what a fuss. You'll have me snivelling if you carry on. Like Can I go up now? Yes, dear, why don't you? He's sleeping so peacefully. I'll just go and tell Violet. She and Ada have been such a strength. He's settled for the night. Nurse insists on staying with him. He seems to have taken quite a fancy to her. You look done in. A little tired, perhaps. I know what you need. A glass of port. Oh, it does sound nice. What are you knitting, dear? A bolero for Jane. She's such a tomboy, none of her clothes last. There you are. Doctor's orders. Thank you, Olivia. Oh, I need to tell you, Kate. Miss Mivert told me. Tony Harriet's coming back on leave this summer. Now, why did she have to say that? She knows Kate was in love with him. He went to India, didn't he? And he's made quite a name for himself out there. She's jealous. Yes. That's, That's nice. what it is. 
She has to convince herself all marriages are somehow second best, like hers. Poor Kate. Now, who can that be at this hour? I'll go, if it's wrong. No, d don't worry. I, I won't monopolize him. Hello? Uh, hello. Uh, could I speak to Miss Olivia Curtis? It's Olivia speaking. Oh, hello. Good evening. This is Rollo Spencer. I hope you don't mind my ringing up. Oh, of course not. It's very nice of you. Is your father any better? Well, yes. He is, actually. This afternoon, he... Well, he, he seemed to turn the corner. Oh, I'm terribly glad to hear that. Terribly glad. It is sweet of you to ring up. Not at all. I wanted to. We've all been terribly concerned. Thank you. It's very kind. Uh, would you hang on a moment? Mummy wants to work with you. Oh, does she? Yes, yes. She, she's just coming. Is that Olivia? Yes, Lady Spencer. My dear, Rollo's told me the good news. I do so rejoice. We've all been terribly concerned. What an anxious time it's been for you. Yes, it has, rather. You must be quite overcome with relief. Yes. Now, tell me, are we going to be able to get a glimpse of you while you're down? You know Mary goes with us. Yes. Th that, that is, Rollo thought she might... You think your mother could spare you for a few hours? Say, tomorrow evening, we'd all love to see you. Oh, very kind of you. Thank you. I'd love to come. And Kate, uh, I imagine she's with you too. Yes. Would she like to join us? It would be so nice to see you both again. I don't know. If you, if you wouldn't mind holding on. Oh, of course. It's Lady Spencer inquiring after Dad. Oh, how very kind of her. She's invited Kate and me to Melbourne tomorrow evening. What shall I say? Oh. I don't know. You can't refuse, surely. You go, Lydia. I'd really rather not. Are you sure? You can wear my white dress. Go on. Say I want to keep Mother company. Lady Spencer? Yes, dear? Kate says she's very sorry, but she feels... Oh, I quite understand. It's a difficult time for you all. She says to thank you very much. Well, dear, we'll expect you tomorrow, then. I'll send Benson with the car. Shall we say uh, 7.30? That sounds wonderful. We look forward to it enormously. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye, Lady Spencer. It happened. I'm to see him again. Uh, her ladyship will be down in a few moments. Thank you. It hasn't changed at all. None of it. Paintings, chandeliers, green brocade... An elegant frozen palace. The rest of the world has changed. Hello. Oh, I didn't hear you. You're miles away. So beautiful. This room. I always admired it. Well, there's talk of having to sell some of the paintings for Gainsborough, possibly. Rembrandt. Oh. It may not look like this for much longer. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, you shouldn't be. It's not the end of the world, is it? Would you like a cocktail? Oh, yes, please. I'm most awfully glad, you know, about your father. Thank you so much. It is good news. I told you it'd be all right, didn't I? <laughs> I'm afraid I didn't believe you. Well, here's luck. I hope it's not as strong as it looks. It'll do you good. <laughs> it will make me awfully dreamy. But you're always dreamy, aren't you? Oh, dear. Does it show? Only to a close observer. Are there many? Tonight? Is it a big party? Only family. Um, my cousin, Mary Denham, I don't think you know her, do you? No. And George. You must remember him. George Bassett, faithful as a hound, <laughs> if you excuse the pun. <laughs> don't worry. I'll look after you. Olivia. It is, my dear. How delightful. <laughs> ah, let me look at you. Oh, you've grown thin, naughty girl. I'm so glad to see you. And your father really is on the mend. That's such good news. Do tell your mother. Oh, Jack. Uh, Jack, you remember our friend Olivia, don't you? Who? Olivia Curtis, Marigold's friend. You remember? Ah, yes. How are you? Glad to see you. How do you do, Sir John? Curtis, I used to know a chap by that name, a uh, little Compton way, Charlie. Curtis, are you? Remember Rollo? 
Olivia is his daughter, Daddy. She's come to dine with us. Bless my soul. Charlie Curtis's girl. Eh? <laughs> You're yeah. looking better, Daddy. Walk did you good. Ah. Do you like heliotrope? Very much. So do I. Don't seem to see much of it about these days. Why is that, I wonder? I expect it's been superseded. I can't stand all this elaborate vegetation. What are those blooms called? Chrysanthemums. They're not flowers at all, to my mind. Well, I admire them awfully. Only perhaps a bit too prosperous. Oh, you know this part of the world, do you? Oh, George, Mary, I think you know George, don't you, Olivia? Yes, uh, how do you do? Hello. Uh, delighted. How do you do? And my niece, Lady Mary Denham. How do you do? We haven't met, have we? No, I don't think... My sister, Lady Clark Matthew, and her husband will also be joining us. I don't think you've met them, have you, Olivia? No. No, I haven't. Now, where is that bad girl? Late as usual, I suppose. No, I don't. Oh, she was still in the bath a few moments ago. I heard her singing. Bad sign, then. I called out the time. I don't think she heard. Well, she heard all right. Uh, dinner is served. Oh, well, uh, come along, my dear. Uh, come along, dear. Uh, <laughs> don't worry, she'll be here. You're sitting next to me, by the way. Thank goodness. But I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Oh, Mark. It's something of a speciality de la maison. No, I really, don't know what we should do if Mrs. Braithwaite ever decided to leave us. I swear half our guests only come because of her cooking. Nonsense, <laughs> <laughs> Lady Spencer. You know that's not true. No, no. The dogs are locked up in the library. It's nice and warm for them in there. Thanks, nice Daddy. It wasn't my fault, Mummy. Honestly, Nanny would waffle on. I, I say, this is most finely good, but what did you say it was again? This drama. It's oh, exciting to see Mummy right. being together. Oh, so I was afraid she might have changed, but she hasn't. Only grown more beautiful. You think so? Such a funny little snouty face, isn't it? India rubbery. Well, it depends what you like, I suppose. What you look for. What do you like? I like what's uncertain, what's imperfect. I like a face to warm up and expand and, and collapse and be different every day and night and from every angle and not to be above looking ugly or comic for some time. <laughs> I see. It sounds interesting. Not awfully restful. <laughs> That's my favourite city in all Europe. I told Harry when we married that if he didn't take me to the festival every year, I would be bored. Oh, yes, I'm sure I'm sure I still love her as she used to be. Nicola, I suppose she is. She hasn't altered much. It's a bore when people aren't strong. Isn't she strong? No, she's always taking, having to take to her bed. I'm so sorry. Hmm. How wretched for you. One's apt to feel such an insensitive brute, always being with a highly strong person. I don't suppose for a moment you need to feel that. Well, I don't know. I, I can't bear women to cry. I do deplore it. Yeah, it's a bad habit. That's what I think. I want to rush off miles. Perhaps I'm not much of a cry. Are you a Puritan? No. Oh, yes, you did, George. It was uh, my fault. Uh, uh, Never mind. We're uh, all uh, apt to drop uh, off uh, our hands. Uh, uh, you don't give much away, do you? Wise woman. No, I'm not that. Oh, don't tell me there's nothing to give away. It's just that my life's not peculiar, I don't mean. Or mysterious. It's rather unexplainable. Is it? Right. Well, I live with my cousin in a dreary corner of London. You probably don't even know exists. I was married years ago. I'm really Mrs. Ida Craig. It didn't work. Bad luck. Oh, no. Stupidity. Only myself to blame. Don't do that. Don't blame yourself. Or anyone else. I never do. People do what they must. Yes. I think that. I don't care much for sweets. Never did. I reserve my forces for the favour. Oh, yes. Carpignan au croute. Rollo, haven't you got a foul temper? Mummy's been saying we never quarrel. Remember, I'm perfectly gastified, especially when Archie was staying with us. How is Archie? I remember him so vividly. Oh, a little older, dear, like all of us, but yeah. still the same Archie underneath. Yes, I wonder why he never married. These women seem to find him so attractive. <laughs> so, you remember Cousin Archie, do you? Oh, yes. I used to think him the beautifulest young man in the world. Yeah. When did you last see him? At Marigold's coming out party. I'm afraid he was rather drunk. 
Was he a ball? Oh, no. But it was a bit of a shock. Mm. It turned life suddenly into such a black yeah. problem. <laughs> Too much to go through with, almost. Yeah. That's right. That's why I went out onto the terrace. Well, I also had gone for a breath of air. <laughs> Very odd. Ever since then, I've wanted to see you again. So have I. Well, I think perhaps coffee for the ladies in the drawing room. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you enjoying yourself? Yes, well, uh, yes, please. I would Tell me something else. Yeah, Shall we meet in London? Yeah, in Good. Yes, now, ask me something. How's the dog? Oh, uh, uh, where's Lucy? Asleep in the library, thank God. You've got that dog on your mind. I noticed you seem freer. Much freer. A photographer's studio, you say, Olivia. What interesting lives you modern girls do lead. So independent. Well, I don't know about that, Lady Spencer. Anna's a close friend. I'm really only helping out. And does your work keep you in London? Yes. I live with my cousin Etty. Mm. Perhaps you remember her. Etty, of course, I remember her. Such an attractive girl. She came to your coming out dance, Marigold. I thought you'd married. Oh, years ago now. Didn't it work out or something? No. She never married. Not that she didn't have opportunities. She just never wanted to. How sad. I don't think so. Well, surely every woman wants children. Even in these dismal days. <laughs> well, speaking as a grandmother... Oh, Mum, <laughs> don't. You make me feel a hundred when you talk like that. I'm sure Lady Mary is right. I've never had children of my own, but my sister Kate... Oh, yes. How is Kate? Such a shame she couldn't be with us. Is she happy? Yes, I think she is. She's married to a doctor and a country practice, about three hours' drive from here. And has she a family? I should say so. She had four. Oh. And beautifully spaced out. Four? Oh, the lucky thing. Well, I seem to have stopped at three. I suppose the youngest, no more than a baby. Eight months. Oh, eight months, the lamb. How I do envy her. If only they'd stay wee and cuddly and never grow up. When I think of mine, the great long-legged things, I can't bear it. Can't you really? I should have thought the only point about producing them was to encourage their growth. Or, or isn't it like gardening? Oh. I don't think it's quite the same. Not for mothers, anyway. Olivia, there's something I must show you. Will you excuse us, Mummy? Oh, well, dear. Oh, oh Mummy, have you seen Olivia? Yes, if I don't talk to her now, I'm... Oh, very well, then, but don't be long. Your aunt and I rather fancied a game of backgammon. Come along, Olivia. Uh, if you're sure... Off you go, dear. Otherwise, Marigold will accuse us of trying to monopolize you. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> you shouldn't have winked at me like that. Lady Mary will think we're hatching some terrible plot. Oh, let her think what she likes. She needs a bomb under her. <laughs> I'm sure she means well. She doesn't mean well at all. Do you really have something to show me? In here. Come on. No one will think of looking for us in here. Where are we? All the telephone room. There, as you can see, it's used for a few other things as well. I keep my secret store of whiskey here. It's supposed to be absolutely private, but I swear the servants use it. It has such an odd smell. Yes, it is rather murky. Oh, Olivia, all these years. Why didn't you look me up in London? I do think you're a pig. Well, I did write. Oh, you haven't even met Sam. Not properly. My irresistible husband. <laughs> Is he irresistible? Some women think so. I read about you in the Tatler. Lord and Lady Britain and their two beautiful children. Your public property now. Oh, that? I don't care a fig about all that. The rest of us do. We envy you. Well, you shouldn't. The truth is, we're absolutely both Sam and me. Have been for years. Sometimes I think it's all going to catch up with us. You know, we go on spending money. Like everyone else. Not quite everyone. Oh, Olivia, I'm sorry. A beastly of me. Are you terribly poor? Rollo did so. I have to earn my living, if that's what you mean. I don't think I'd mind being poor a bit. I think you would, really. No, honestly, I've thought about it a lot. I mean... 
If I was in love with a person saying he was terrible... <laughs> Marigold, what a daydream. No, I mean it. You don't realise. It's just that most of the time one feels so empty. A sort of fraud. Oh, working for your living, that, that's real, isn't it? No more real than anything else. I thought having babies would solve things for me. I mean, you can't pretend about that, can you? No matter how easy it all seems in the beginning. How strange she's become. A chameleon. There's something not quite right about her. She'll get bored with me soon. I have nothing to offer her. Please, I'm not a china doll. But, Nicola, I do enjoy my life. She's something of an invalid, I gather. Duncan, she's no more of an invalid than you or me. Well, not strong, then. One miscarriage. Perfectly ordinary, no complications. Two years ago it was. Rumour has it she still won't let Rollo near her. Witless ninny. But they are together. Oh, yes. You know Rollo. Loyal to the end. Are you Rollo? Good old Rollo. Have you just been flirting with Marriage him? is the very devil, isn't it? Just too degrading for words. Well, some are. Well, not that I'd want to change anything, mind you. Mine turned out to be a non-starter. Oh, Olivia. Oh, darling, I'm so sorry. That was tactless of me. It's all right, really. I don't mind. I was only trying to say, well, you know, it's just a terrible gamble for everyone. I expect it is. Did you? I mean, was it someone else? Was that why you left your husband? No, <laughs> nothing so romantic. Ivor and I were just unsuited. We sort of drifted into marriage, then drifted out. There wasn't ever a moment oh, when... Oh, I think you're awfully brave, really, I do. I'd never dare do anything so... Do you like jazz? Uh, yes. Yes, I do. Ronnie's idea of this. When it all gets too much for him, he locks himself in here and listens to records. <laughs> Won't they hear us? Oh, they're getting strong. I doubt it. <laughs> you dance well. Dance with me? I, I, I'd much rather watch. And George will. Won't you, George? Hmm? He's not afraid. Oh, I say, rather. <laughs> Hello. Thought we might find you in here. Marigold wanted to come. Marigold's got what she wanted. I didn't hear you come in. It's getting to be something of a habit. They dance well, don't they? They've had lots of practice. He doesn't remember me. The last time we met, he was obliged to correct me. George? He's never spoken harshly to a woman in his life. Oh, he wasn't harsh, just dumbfounded. You see, in those days, I knew nothing whatsoever about hunting. Mm. I called pink coat. <laughs> Red coat. <laughs> <laughs> Dance? Mm. Let's get away. Get, get away? Do you want to? No, no, never mind. Don't know what I'm talking about. Can't, anyway. I suppose not. I want something. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get it. I expect you get most things you want. It isn't exactly up to me. I... I don't have any ties. If that's what you're asking. You're lucky. It doesn't always seem like that. It hasn't. In the past. <laughs> you know, considering the population of the world, it beats me how people do come across each other once in a blue moon. Yes. It is rather amazing. Hmm. When you're ready, I'll, I'll drive you home. I told Benson not to wait up. So it's going to be true. I can't stop it. Somebody's up late. What? Over there. The light bulb. Oh, yes, yes. It's that blind chap. I forget his name. Jimmy. No. I danced with him at Marigo's party. Bad business. He was wounded in the war and now has consumption. Oh, how awful. I didn't know. Will you get better? I doubt you. Mummy wanted to send him to Switzerland, to the sanatorium, but he wouldn't hear of it. Doesn't he want to get well? But seem not. 
You have to ask Marigold. She sees more of him than the rest of us. Marigold. He danced with her too, didn't he? He waited all evening. Is he still in love with her? I wonder. All right. Mm. If they could only see me. Sleeping eyes and shuttered houses. It's past midnight. I'm with Rollo Spencer. He's driving me home. Next on the left, isn't it? Yes. But don't dive in. Everyone will be asleep. There. Thank you so much for bringing me home. It was a lovely evening. Hmm. When shall I see you again? When do you want to? As soon as possible. All right. Do you want to see me again? Yes. You remember I said that I wanted something I wasn't sure I was going to get? Yes, I remember. Well, shall I? Yes. At least if you're sure. I'm sure. Do you think that you might be able to like me a bit? Oh, yes. Darling. You're so young. I've never known anyone like you before. You're like a young, young girl. What are you thinking? Nothing. I can't think. You're not afraid, are you? No. What then? I, I suppose I just can't believe it. You will soon. I promise you. When did you think of this? As soon as I saw you on the train, just as I'd finished ordering the sausages. No, 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 no. Before that, to be honest. Well, the first time we met at that famous dance, I wanted to kiss you then on the toes. I don't believe that for a moment. I did, I did. You looked so kind, and I... I don't know, sort of restful. I, I must go now. I'll, I'll need your address so that I can write to you. And if ever you want me, you can... you can ring me at this number. Uh, your office? Yes. There's no way of knowing, is there, what's going to happen. Are you happy? Of course I am. I always meant to be happy. I, I always thought I would be, one day. Now I am. I'm glad. Let's always be happy. Yes. Don't think you'll grow tired of me. No, that's not possible. You'll get bored with me. Now, now you're being silly. Good night, Rolla. Good night, darling. I'll write to you. Good night. Rollo, my darling. Now I am back at the beginning. Now it begins what I dreamed was to be. Rollo. I've never had a lover. I want you to know that. Not because I'm cold. But because it had to be love. After I... That was failure enough. Do you understand? Everything has been because of you, Rollo. Everything. Anything for me? No. There's only one. It's from Kate. Why did I do that? I didn't have to lie.
darling. Since the weekend, I've been so happy. You were so sweet to me. How do you feel? I'll ring as soon as I can. Oh. Rollo. Rollo. Everything all right? Oh, yes. She got home safely. Polly has a touch of earache. Otherwise, all's well. Polly's the baby, isn't she? Yes. Do you know how Kate does it? She's the capable one, remember? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, darling, Miss Dash, you know what Jack's like. So important. Poor Jack. Is he frightfully enamoured? Well, he is being rather divine. You shouldn't tease him. I don't. I'll see you later, darling. Don't wait up. Bye. Bye. You see, I don't mind. Not anymore. The winter streets, rain, wind, fog, the traffic sadness. It's not my life they're lamenting. My life is just beginning. Hello? Olivia? Olivia speaking. Uh, hello, hello, this is Rollo. How are you? I'm fine, Rollo, thank you. Got my letter? Yes, it came by the last post yesterday. Look here, what are you doing this evening? Well, I was having dinner with some friends. Maybe going to a film. You see. I, I, I could cancel. Well, well no, I, I, I've got to dine myself, perhaps... Perhaps if you're not fixed up, we could, we could meet afterwards, say, around ten. We could have supper or something. All right. Sh shall, I, shall I pick you up or somewhere? What? Well, I don't know quite where I'll be. You see, I'll have dinner with my friends and then... I, I, I suppose I'll come back here. Well, I'll call for you then. All right. Ten-ish? No? Yes, that'll be fine. Goodbye, Rollo. Bye, Olivia. Ten o'clock. That's in less than 12 hours. I don't feel it, anything. Do I? Otie will be out. I should be pleased. We'll have the flat to ourselves. Look, I say it's crass irresponsibility. Uh, any writer worth his salt, any artist at all for that matter, no, must Colin. take into account what's happening at this very moment all over Europe. Oh, the burning of the Reichstag was no isolated phenomenon. It simply polarized both sides yes, into but a... Colin, if what you're saying is true... It's true and inevitable, my dear Hannah. Well, ask Olivia, she knows. Well, it does seem we will have to choose one day... If not for the Germans and the Italians, then at least for ourselves. You believe what's being said, Olivia? About Hitler's persecution of the Jews? I don't want to believe it, but oh I... Oh, my just... God, now, isn't that just like a woman? Look, we have refugees here in England, refugees from Hitler's Germany, more and more every day, and you don't want to believe in persecution? I know what Olivia means. One doesn't like to feel helpless. There's always Spain. If the war goes on, surely the choice there is clear. No, it's as clear in Madrid as it is in Berlin oh, and Rome. They're right. In Spain, Simon, you have Colin, between the Phalanx and Anna, the That's not the end of the story. Good people. Hitler, Mussolini and Franklin. I love all this world. Well, of evil. This room. It's Together, really they constitute the most great like threat to the liberty of the Western Europe and Atlantic comes. And all we do in England is talk. No, I agree with you. We can't stay on the sidelines forever. <sighs> Oughtn't we to be going? It's after nine. Good God, so it is. Drink up, my friends. We can continue our discussion after the film. <laughs> You'll have to count me out, I'm afraid. Etty, my cousin, is in bed with a feverish cold. I, I promised I'd come back after dinner and look after her. I thought she had a cast-iron constitution. <laughs> Not at this time of year. Well, don't you go catching anything yourself, Olivia. I've done without you enough for one week. <laughs> I promise. If I thought there was any hope, I'd try and persuade you to change your mind. Olivia behaved like a cad. Mm. Not a chance. <laughs> Half past ten... Why doesn't he come? I should have gone with them. They're my friends. I've never lied to them before. 
Oh, God. Calm. I must be calm. Hello? May I come in? Yes, of course. How are you? You're looking awfully well. I'm sorry, Emily. This part of London seems to be rather a maze. I've been up and down half a dozen streets trying to find you. It is rather mythical. Every tax is Waterloo. <laughs> That's very nice. All edges, I'm afraid. My room's upstairs. Eddie's out, is she? Yes. Would you like a cigarette? Look, oh, have one of mine. Masses on me. Thank you. That is rather a queer sort of time to call. Not a bit. I've just got back. But I had to dine with Marigold. Mm. Sam's away and I promised to do hers. I, I thought you looked oh, right. Sorry about this. Hate formal clothes myself, but what can one do? Last Sunday at Meldon. That was my first full dress affair for months. Was it? Was it really? What have you been doing since then? Oh, nothing much, you know. Well, <laughs> you know what others like. I'd have had rather a full week. Would you like a drink? There's not a lot of choice, but I, I, I can offer you. Oh, no, 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 no. Thanks, okay. I'll just not. How's Marigold? Oh, gay as ever. They've gone on to some charity ball or other. I made my excuses. Can't stand these dollars and festivals anymore. Are you going to Melbourne this weekend? No, no, I think not. Little has gone to Cornwall. An extended stay. I might join her just for the weekend. I see. How about you going on? I don't think so. Dad's much better. Sitting up now and eating normally. Mother thinks best if I come later in the month. Oh, rapid recovery. I'm so glad. It's no good. We're from different worlds. Strangers. Look here. I came as soon as I could. Yes. Don't be frightened. You're glad to see me, aren't you? Yes. And what is it? What's wrong? I, I don't know. It's... It's this room. Then we'll go to yours. Well, wait here. I'll call. It's still not too late. I couldn't stop it. I want him to see. To know how important. I, I, I must tell him. Explain. I've never done this before. I don't know what's expected. My silk dressing gown. That's it. Then it won't look good. Would I be so nervous if we were married? I wonder. I couldn't stay down there any longer. Strange. This place, I've, I've never liked it, and now it seems I don't know. Exactly right. <laughs> Are you hungry? Raven. Good. Then let's eat our way through the menu. Everything we want. He's my lover, Rollo Spencer. I have a lover. You are happy, aren't you, darling? No regrets? I don't think I've ever been happy till now. My God, I was nervous when I walked into your house tonight. You didn't show it. You were like a statue. I thought I'd never be able to bring you to life. I was frightened then. But not now. No. Now I'm simply happy. Are you ready to order an answer? Yes, yes, thank you. I think the lamb chops, don't you, Bellum? Uh, with sausages, don't <laughs> for good measure. Sausages. The supreme temptation. Anything to drink, sir? Darling? Coffee, please. A large one. And I'll have a lager. Very good, sir. <laughs> I told you I'd hold you to it. To what? This cup of coffee. Is that my shilling? It is. 
Do you mean to say you really kept it? I did. We didn't imagine this sort of cup of coffee, did we? Oh, I did. I've got lots of imagination. You're very businesslike. Do you always get on so swimmingly? Don't. Don't say things like that, will you, darling? You don't know how proud I feel. I'm the luckiest man in the world. All the things I couldn't cope with. And now I've got you. It had to happen, don't you think? We couldn't have prevented it. Do you know what I'd like to do? I'd like to take you shopping. Buy whatever you fancy. Jewelry, clothes. Will you let me do that one day? No, Rollo. I don't want that. No, why ever not? It would make me so happy. I just don't want to. That's all. You're such a frugal little thing, aren't you? I don't believe you ever spend money on yourself. <laughs> How do you know I didn't spend the entire afternoon wallowing in a beauty parlor? Because you've no need to. You're beautiful anyway. And the shops and the sausages, sir. Hmm. <laughs> Darling, such blooms. Where did they materialize from? You're not the only one with an admirer, you know. Olivia, you sly thing. <laughs> Is it the man with a gorgeous voice? If so, he's going to ring you later. When did you speak to him? While you were out. I must say he did sound divine. Oh, you know what these married men are. They will have their little illusions. Talking of which, <laughs> the egregious Jack. You know, I do feel bad leaving you alone all the time. You mustn't worry. After all, I do have my roses. Don't wait up for me, darling, will you? Jack insists on supper after the theatre. Hmm. <laughs> I'm afraid I'll be awfully late to Do you think she knows? Betty. Hmm. I, I thought she might have recognized my voice. It was rather foolish of me. Betty doesn't think about anything very much. You mustn't worry. Well, no, it's, it's just that I... I couldn't bear anything to be spoiled. Well, it's so bloody, isn't it? People are so suspicious. I don't want... Anyone, anything to hurt you. Does it worry you, the deceit? It would me. I don't honestly think that it does. What people don't know can't hurt them, can it? Nicola. He doesn't want to hurt her. I know that. Because she's hurt him badly. It is difficult for you. I do see that. Oh, darling. So understanding, you're the only woman in the world I know who doesn't go on about things. Perhaps that's because you see so little of me. Don't say that. You know I'd be here all the time if I could. Rollo, if that were true, I only really see you when she's away. But I won't be jealous. She's your wife. But she's not real. Just a beautiful, protective doll. Shall I tell you what worries me? More than anything, really. What's that? Losing you. I do wish you wouldn't say things like that. You know, it's nonsense. You don't understand. I don't mean that you might stop wanting to see me. Though God knows that thought's terrible enough. What frightens me is that you might have an accident. Be hurt or even killed. It's ridiculous. They wouldn't let me see you. Don't you see? Nobody would know how I felt. Darling, don't care too much about me, will you? Don't you want me to love you? Oh, yes. Yes, I do terribly. Only you mustn't sort of think too much about me. I'm not much good, and don't you forget it. I've never been any use to anyone. If we were married, I might reform you. Darling, you're the nicest person I've ever known. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's a relief to see her behaving like a dog for you. <laughs> Don't be deceived. She may be the neurotic female on the surface, but underneath, she's pure canine. <laughs> she still doesn't like me. Oh, she's jealous. What do you expect? 
I feel as if I'm playing truant. Thank you. Well, it's not for the first time. What do you tell them? At your office. Well, it varies. Today, you're an out-of-town client. Bedridden, alas. Quite <laughs> unable to come to the office. Rollo, you're terrible. What do you tell Anna? Oh, family excuses, you know. Kate coming up to town, mother having a day in the shop. I wish we had a place of our own. Right. No. That would make it... It would spoil it. Don't you want us to make love? But we do. Only when Eddie's out. Oh, darling. Don't look so miserable. Anyone would think you're any interested in me. Don't say that. You know it's not true. By the way, happy birthday. How did you know? I cheated. Never mind how. Well, let's go to open it. Rollo. Don't you like it? An emerald? Yes. My favourite stone. I did so want to give you one. I hope you don't mind. Mind? Oh, God. I don't know what to say. It's not my kind of ring at all. Emeralds are for Nicola. Marigold. It's beautiful, Rollo. It must have cost a fortune. There's this, too. Just a little thing, I it's Victorian. I don't know why. I think it looks like you. Daddy. A paradox surrounded by pearls. I love it. I swear it always. That's a rather nice, doesn't it? Oh, I mean. The other I wear on grand occasions when you want to flaunt me. But this. This is special. I shall never take it off. Mm. <sighs> that was a near thing. She didn't see you. I don't think so. I can just hear her. Darling, who's plutocratic auto? <laughs> Perhaps you ought to park round the corner. I am glad to see you. I've missed you. Did you have a good weekend? <laughs> Bracing. I think that's the word. Wiltshire in winter is the best tonic I know for jaded city men. Did Nicola? No, no, no. She's with her mother. As a matter of fact, she's off to Switzerland next week, some new doctor she's read about. I see. I thought perhaps that, well, if you're not fixed up, we might have a weekend away, drive down to the coast. That's if you'd like to. <sighs> well, you weren't planning to go home? No. I went last weekend. While you were in Wilt. And it's all right? Sounds marvellous. Hmm. Darling, come and look at this stone. It's beautiful. Haven't you got enough? There's the paradox, you see, and the circle of pearls. Just like our own ring. It's not like it at all. But I love you for saying it. <laughs> I shall start a collection. Shells and pebbles from the beaches of Dorset. Not cold. Not now. Beautiful, isn't it? Even in winter. Especially in winter. It's dark. Do you think we should press on? I don't want it to end. Hmm. It's only just beginning. <laughs> What do you think? It looks rather grand. Well, the food's good. I checked. And I don't think we'll have any trouble getting a room not at this time of year. All right. Come on, then. Let's hang up our hats. I'm ravenous. Good evening. I'd like a, a double room, please, just for the night. With bath, sir? Yes, yes, certainly. Overlooking the sea, if you can manage it. Very good, sir. There you are, darling. What did I tell you? Do you always manage things so swimmingly? Only when you're with me. You'll bring me luck. I'd better see to the car. Why don't you wait here? Let me be a minute. All right. Don't be long. Back in a moment. Excuse me, madam. Yes? The register. I wonder if you'd mind signing it. It'll save troubling your husband later. Oh, uh, oh yes, of course. My husband? 
I can't. Mustn't write Spencer. Someone might recognize. God. I can't think. Thank you, Mrs. Spender. The portable shows your room when you're ready. <laughs> I don't know what came over me. <laughs> no, 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 no. It was my fault. I should have signed when I booked the room. I knew it had to begin with S. The initials on your back. Oh, you are a clever girl. You know, I'd probably put Brown or Smith. Or <laughs> well, Smith would have been better. <laughs> <laughs> How did you get on? Did you run into anyone? No, Peyton, I did. Big stiff called Podge Haywood. We were at Sanders. But I know him. He's hmm? a friend of Etty's. Did you speak to him? Well, no, thank God. He had a redhead in so hot little number by the look of that. Something told me he didn't want to be recognised any more than I did. Where is he now? I drove off like a scalded cat. How awful. Not bound to happen sooner or later. Is that what they say about me, his friend? That I'm a hot little number? Come on, darling, cheer up. Mustn't take things to heart. Who do you say you're with when you come to see me? What do you tell Nicola? Oh, really, darling, does it matter? I want to know. Well, usually I say I'm going to the club. If not, George will always provide an alibi. George? Well, there's no need to look so shocked. It would never occur to George to wonder what I was up to. Come on, we need a drink. I'll have to change my dress. Well, in that case, I'll wait for you downstairs. Please yourself. If I stay here while you're changing, we'll miss dinner. Oh, dear. That would never do, would it? Think of the disappointment in the kitchen. The two best customers in the hotel not even bothering to come downstairs. Don't you be long now. And don't you drink too many brandies. No, all right. Are you happy, darling? It's been the most beautiful day of my life. I can't quite believe it. We'll do it again. Oh, I don't see why not. Sneak us away till the end of the month. Why shouldn't we enjoy ourselves? You know what I'd like? More than anything else in the world. What's that? It would make this day, the happiness, immortal. Then you must have it. Your child. I'd like to have your child. What's wrong? Wouldn't do, would it, darling? Damn Graham. What happened? Here, here, let me. Oh, thank thank you. God we raced me to paint at least two hours of the storm. It didn't seem so bad earlier. You people make allowances, wouldn't you? Cars slewed all over the place. Where are we going? As far out of London as possible. I thought perhaps the Cotswolds. Good idea. Or well, we can escape some infernal rain. Just have to make the best of them, I'm afraid. Have you ever seen such a weather? It's like driving through thick soup. Can we call it a day? Doesn't seem much point in going on, does it? Oh, I don't know. We don't usually let rooms this time of year. My wife and I would be most grateful. <sighs> you could have the front bedroom, I suppose. Thank you. Thank you. That's most kind of you. You'd be wanting anything to eat? Well, if it's not too much trouble, you see, we'd rather hope to be in Gloucester by this evening. Oh, you'd be lucky. Break this lot's coming down. Darling, I'm so sorry. I've got a big little game of darts. It's all right. Oh, Lord, is that bed as awful as it looks? If you don't mind, Aunt Will. Oh, I'm sorry. I did so want this weekend to be special. Nicola's due home next week, isn't she? Yes. Then I don't expect I'll see you. What do you mean? Of course you'll see me. That's meeting. Once a week. Olivia. What's the matter? You're not going to cry, are you? <laughs> Why shouldn't I? Why shouldn't I cry? I am feeling too. If you knew what it's like for me these last few weeks with her away. <laughs> no. <laughs> and now you expect me just to go back? Stop, stop, stop. Oh, Jesus, stop. 
I love you. Don't you understand? Oh, God, I must have been very blind. I had no idea you weren't happy. I, I, I am. I, at least sometimes. Why didn't you tell me all this before? I, I didn't know how I felt. You know what my life is? Yes. I'm married. Yes, you're married. I can't hurt her. No. Whatever happens, so long as she wants me to stay with her, I couldn't leave her. She does want you to stay, then? Yes. She does. You love her? Yes, I love her. Although she doesn't. Although it doesn't. No, work. no, no, no. It doesn't work very well. Listen, Olivia. I can't change anything. I can't change myself. I can't shatter her. I thought you understood. I suppose I did. One doesn't think. Tries not to. I love you, Olivia. I expect I always shall. If it's worth it at all for you, don't quite leave me. <laughs> that, that, that's when we're very old. We can be together. On my 70th birthday, we'll have a night together for old times' sake. <laughs> <laughs> Is it the date? <laughs> What do you say? We could spend the night in Oxford, or shall we dress up? I did rather promise I'd be back. Yes. Simon's parties are almost mythical. You feel it might be bad luck not to go. I'm sure you'll have a very jolly time. This one's on rather a grand scale. It's in honor of Jocelyn. Yes, yes, you go. I do wish you'd come. <coughs> now, what on earth would I want to do that for? I'd be like a fish out of water. Simon's world is larger than you think. Half of Mayfair will be there. What will you do? Isn't that? I'll be at home all evening. You could call in on me after the party. Oh, I... I, I have to stay out very late anyway. There are quite a few things that I should... Oh, but I, 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 I couldn't. I mean... If you can drag yourself away from your friends, I'd very much like to see you. to me about time and I don't think you even notice I'm here. Anna, that's nonsense. Oh. It's as much your party as his. Oh, perhaps that's what's wrong. It's interchangeable. Oh, you said really making everyone else feel special. Olivia, yeah, yeah. I've been looking for you. Well, how have you been? Hello, Colin. You look so excuse? Yes, been telling Asia. I don't think he believes me. Telling him what? Oh, the oak trees are cut away by the salt tide. Seaweed grows right in under the cabbage, under the cornfield. It's significant, that. It's a symbol. Yes, I don't think Anna does, though. She doesn't understand either. Not literally, you see, like you and me. I'll leave you to him. Good luck. <laughs> oh, women know nothing. I know about symbols. Oh, you know nothing, nothing. If you did... You'd understand. Understand what? Relationship. Sex and life and... But more than fundamental, it's pervasive. Oh, Colin. If only you knew. Oh, I could explain, but... Well, you're a woman. You'd be bored. Colin, I'm in love. Why is it all so depressing? Half of them are drunk. Those who aren't wish they were. 
I shouldn't have come. A beautiful virgin. <laughs> my white dress. Is it new? Acquired. My sister Kate gave it to me. We thought you weren't coming. Simon, when have I ever missed one of your parties? Well, you have been rather mysterious of late. It's a long night. We make them dreams. Haven't fallen in love, have you? Why don't you say that? You glow. Positively indecent. Rude health, that's all it is. I've discovered I have an appetite. Well, don't lose it. It suits you. Simon? Yes, my dear? Is Anna... Is she all right? As far as I know, why? I, I just thought that she... She's she worried about the studio closing, but then you know all about that. Yes. She wanted me to have plenty of notice. Could be a blessing in disguise for both of you. You can start writing those stories you keep talking about, and Anna can get back to her painting. She's dabbled in photography long enough. Yes, but how will she live? Like the rest of us, from day to day. Is it that bad? I think so. Everything is changing, disintegrating. Don't you feel it? We're a generation without guarantees. The future is unrecognizable. You sound quite cheerful about it. I'm not afraid of it. There's an awful lot of dross to be got rid of, you know. Simon, there's something... Oh, God, it's Cora Maxwell. Is she drunk? Drunk? Well, I'm bleeding by the look of her. I'd better go. But can I help? No, thank you. If you see Anna... Oh, yes, Simon. Even you can be blind. Can't you see what's happening to Anna? To me? My God. Marigold. What on earth is she doing here? It's the worst to do, Livia. You've been ignoring me all evening. But I didn't even know. For that rotter Desmond fellow. You know Desmond? Yes. Stay with him. There he goes. You're amazing. He's not at all pleased with me. He's got the salt. <laughs> what did you do to him? I told him I thought he would do Jocelyn's book with a disagreement. It should never be published. You know Jocelyn Forsyth too. Greatest writer of the decade. I told him. Oh. Dismal Desmond. He didn't like it. Had this frontry to suggest I hadn't read the book. Where's Sam? Sam, your husband. Oh, Sam! Sam's away. Uh, where is he? Scotland. That's it. Shooting party. Melancholy Scotch cousin. Couldn't face it this year. Sam understands. Are you all right? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Having a wonderful time. I swear you must come to dinner. Why don't you? You and Rollo. Rollo's always had a soft spot for you to cheer him up. Why? Is he miserable? That cow of a wife. Oops. Don't need to be impolite. She's away again. Switzerland. Sometimes I wish you'd come on looking for you. Where? Can't see. Why does everyone look the same? Over there in the corner. It's Desmond. He does look rather woebegone. <laughs> oh dear, I am a beast. Shall I go into seem better? <laughs> Shall I, Lydia? <Lydia? laughs> but if you don't, I think you might cry all over Jocelyn. I'm sure you don't want that. <laughs> no. Poor old Desmond. Hello, Desmond. You see, Lolly? Our worlds do touch. If only because of my What would she say, I wonder, if she knew? <laughs> I should never have come. He probably didn't even mean it. Lights on. That's something. If only know that, I can see. Oh, thank God. Darling, I do so want to get to you. I had to come. I couldn't have borne it if you hadn't. Come and sit by the fire. Can I get you anything? Drink? Cigarettes? Oh, no. No, thank you. I'm fine now. 
How was the party? Awful. I hated it. Colin was being squawky and Anna looked sad. As for Simon... <laughs> I expect you weren't in a party mood. Fact is, people shouldn't go to parties when they're in love. It makes them feel awfully superior. Is that how you felt? I think Simon noticed it. You yeah. haven't told you? I haven't told anyone. I don't know what I'd have done if you hadn't come. I nearly didn't. Then I ran into Marigold. Marigold? Seems she's quite a friend of Jocelyn Forsyth. Who's he? The novelist. The party was for him, if you remember. His new book. She's supposed to be in Scotland. She's invited us to dinner. You and me. She had this idea I might cheer you up. Oh, the devil she has. You don't think she's guessed? Oh, no. How could she? We've been so careful. Rollo. Hmm? I don't want to stay. Not here. Well, there's nothing to worry about. The servants went to bed hours ago. I shouldn't have come. I'd have been very miserable if you hadn't. Will you call me a taxi? Oh, can't you stay just a little longer? Please, Rollo. But I'm coming with you. There's no need, really. Edges her. I know that. Rollo. I do love you, Olivia. You do believe that, don't you? Yes. You mustn't think it's... It's only making love. That that's all it is for me. You don't think that, do you? No. Not anymore. Then what is it? You'll be angry with me. I do wish you wouldn't talk like that. You and Nicola. I know you love her. I'm not asking. S since last night, I'll talk... I'm not jealous anymore. And I'm happy. Really, I am. But I have to know if you and she ever... nowadays... No. Forgive me. I, I no. should never have asked. <laughs> it's all right. You see, you've nothing to be jealous of. I love you. I told you I was no use, Olivia. A selfish swine, in fact. You should have a home. Children. I just get in the way of that. But I'm no good at being noble and unselfish. I love you. For what it's worth. I want you for myself. Adapted by Elspeth Sands from Rosamund Leyland's novel, The Weather in the Streets. Angela Pleasance, a part of Olivia, and Simon Cadell, Robert. Lady Spencer, Maxie Naughty. Sir John, John Franklin Robbins. Mary Gold, Valerie Saroof. Lady Mary, Dolly Cockle. George, Peter Wickham. Kate, Marion Diamond. Mrs. Curtis, Monica Gray. Etty, Rosalind Ayres. Anna, Susan Engel, Simon, Jonathan Youth, Colin, Sylvester Moran, with Bruce Purchase, Michael McStay, and Philip Fox. The music was arranged and directed by Mike Steer. The play was directed by Jane Moore.